Hey, let's uh, jump in and get started. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I'm Robert Theobald, Small Business Ombudsman and Vice President of Small Business Services here at the Arizona Commerce Authority. Uh, we appreciate you joining us on this Tuesday morning as our second webinar of this new year. So we're excited to have you with us. Uh, if you've been on before, you will have noticed that I tend to change my backgrounds on my uh, picture there. So I changed it today with some snow to represent the rain and cold weather we've gotten and the, the snow up in the, the northern, the higher elevation areas. So, um, and there's a picture from Arizona on the way to Crown King. So I also try to bring in Arizona pictures when I do that. Uh, so to start, as I like to do, I like to start by thanking all of our community partners. We couldn't do these boot camp sessions without our community partners, their time, their effort, and their expertise. Also, for those that are new, the Small Business Boot Camp is designed to help small businesses prepare, plan, and grow. And it is a statewide initiative supported by all of our community partners. We have about 120 plus community partners that have uh, participated. Uh, in the boot camp, and we continue to grow that number as well with experts in their fields. And not only is it a webinar that we do every Tuesday, Tuesday morning, 9 a.m., it is also a content library and a series of workshops. Additionally, we have just added on the third Tuesday of every month a Spanish language boot camp session as well at 6 p.m. So Today at 6 p.m., we'll be doing that Spanish language boot camp. So if you know anybody that can benefit from that, please have them sign up on our website um, for that. So with the workshops, um, we're going to get into that in a bit. But the content library is an amazing tool that we have. Um, and there's no cost to access it. It is a recording of all of our previous boot camp webinars and workshops. And it is available to you. There's over 200, more like 250 recorded webinars and presentations available now. And you can sort by those seven different categories you see on the screen to help narrow down and, and find the session you might be looking for. If there's something you're looking for and you can't find it, feel free to reach out to us and we can guide you to that a session that best fits your needs as well. Some other programs at the ACA has to help support small businesses, our small business services, our workforce division, and our Arizona MEP, our Manufacturing Extension Partnership. Now, these programs are here to support small businesses in various different aspects. Uh, you can find more information on them on our website. Additionally, on our website, you'll find our small business checklist. And this is an online interactive tool that helps entrepreneurs identify the commonly requested licensing and registration and compliance needs at the local, state, and federal levels uh, when starting or expanding your business. Uh, this is also, again, it's a great resource and there's no cost to access it. You'll also notice there on the bottom of the screen, on the screen, is Sally, our virtual assistant. The checklist is extremely in-depth, but for simpler, quicker answers, our virtual assistant, Sally, can help with those questions as well. So take a look at that uh, tool as well. So with that, we also wanna mention that our Small Business Digital Academy uh, is getting ready to start its 10th cohort. And this is a six week program designed to help small businesses scale their online presence and build their digital capacity. Uh, it is no cost to attend and applications are currently open for this program. Uh, if it's something, it's kind of a digital 101 uh, for small business owners. So if it's something you're interested, you can check out the information sessions and apply online, and that will start later this month. So looking at some upcoming sessions, again, this evening is our Spanish session um, that we're doing in partnership with, uh, again, some of our community partners and Grow with Google. And then next Tuesday is how to align people with profit. And then we have the power of capital. And then on February 9th, we also have our first workshop of 2023, which is Business Tax tax Basics. It's a lunch and learn virtual workshop. It is going to be more than an hour. Uh, the Department of Revenue is expecting two to three hours on that to cover everything they need to, to help support uh, small businesses understanding the business tax basics. So hopefully you can join us for that. 
and that will be virtual as well, so we can reach all corners of the state. So with that, we want to jump into today's session. We have our speakers today, uh, Lisa Card and our Monzo Esparza. Both are with the Maricopa Community College Small Business Development Center, and they've been on before. We're excited to have them back. So with that, Lisa, I'm going to stop sharing and let you share your screen and take over. Awesome. Thank you so much. I love what the ACA does, and it's uh, wonderful to be here this morning. Let me go ahead and... Can you see my screen or no? No, we cannot. Got it. Let's see here. Can you see it now? Yep, we are good. Okay, bear with me here because now I'm looking for my notes. <laughs> so I may have to redo this. Bear with me. Okay, and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, turn off my camera in a second. Let me just move uh, this over. So good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Robert covered um, that the session is being recorded. Um, my name is Lisa Card, and um, I've been with the SBDC Network for about 12 years now, and it is my pleasure to uh, be here uh, with the ACA. I am joined by my fellow colleague, Armando Esparza, um, who's also an SBDC analyst. And Armando and I have been working with our pre-venture clients at Maricopa Small Business Development Center. And these clients are those individuals that have a business idea, but not sure if it's feasible or they're looking to start their business. So I'm gonna turn off my camera because I see that my video is a little glitchy. And this up here, okay. So we are a part of a national network with over a thousand SBDCs in the country. Maricopa Community College SBDC is a cooperative program between Maricopa Community College and the U.S. Small Business Administration. The Arizona Small Business Development Network provides high quality, high impact, no cost, one-on-one -on -one business counseling and trainings. We are Arizona's go-to resource to start, grow, and transition a business with having over 10 SBDC service centers and several procurement technical assistance centers throughout the state of Arizona, along with over 35 business analysts to meet with you. So who do we serve? We serve businesses that are independently owned and operated, that are for profit and located in the United States. So we don't just serve mom and pop businesses. A lot of people think small business is just mom and pop, but the SBA defines a small business by the standards below. So if you look there, I have listed general contractors, specialty trade contractors, retail and service industries, agriculture businesses. And um, so depending on the annual, the average annual receipts by industry is uh, the types of businesses that we can serve. So if you were a general contractor, uh, you can make up to $39.5 million and we can still help you. Um, and then numbers of employees uh, is important, and that could range up to 500 employees, depending on one of those industries. So it's good to know uh, we service um, a, a range of uh, industries and happy to assist. So our primary offerings are providing guidance through the one-on-one, -on -one, no-cost business counseling, trainings, and resources. Our AZSBDC state network, they've really filled our toolboxes with great tools and resources to share with our clients. I want to introduce you to a new program that we're offering called Aero. So Aero is an Arizona B2B marketplace that connects your business 
with experts ready to offer their services and expertise to help you reach your business goals. So if you look at this slide, you're going to see for service providers and for service seekers. So let's say you're a service seeker. You would like to maybe have your website uh, rebuilt. Uh, maybe it's really old and you know you need some help there. Well, we have service providers that can help you do that. And if you look there within the rings, it says fully subsidized. So that means our service providers are paid through this program, this Aero program, to help our service seekers uh, cover that bill. So our service seekers do not pay for this service. Uh, we have people that have registered for help with um, accounting, setting up their QuickBooks, um, helping them with social media, uh, creating a website, all kinds of really great um, projects. So let's say you're in business and you would, you're interested in becoming a service provider. Um, please check that link out. Um, it's that ArizonaArrow.com. Go there and read about that. And maybe you need some help. Service seekers, go ahead and uh, go to that website and click on that and see how we can help you. It's a really great program. And of course, um, one of our valuable partners is the Arizona Commerce Authority. Um, you know, Robert shared a lot about the offerings, but I just want to say that um, I highly suggest checking out um, the boot camp videos, the library, um, and also that new business checklist. I've been using it for years with the clients, and um, it is just a wonderful tool. So um, check them out. Okay, so we're going to cover um, the topics that you're seeing on the screen here. So building that business model, you know, creating that business plan, templates and softwares to do that, and then uh, plan topics and trends to consider. And then um, Armando has a robust marketing plan. There are trends for 2023. And right now, I'm going to ask Faith to do the first poll question. <laughs> okay, so are you currently in business? So if you can let us know, are you currently in business? Yes, no, or you're looking to start this year. If you could take that poll, that would be wonderful. We'll just wait a few seconds. Faith says it usually takes about 30 seconds to get everybody going. Awesome. Okay, so currently in business, wow, 67% joined a business planning um, uh, session. Um, 5% no, and 27% looking to start this year. Wonderful. Well, great. Um, you know, knowing that we have 67% of business uh, individuals that are in business taking this, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how we're going to be able to help you. Um, you'll find there's a lot of businesses that have never done a business plan. Okay, here we go. So business plan challenge. First of all, I want to say, that um, you want to keep it simple and get it done within 30 days or less. Now, um, your plan needs to be clear and focused. And my clients, at the very least, usually have their rough draft ready for review in 30 days. So I highly suggest talking to a business counselor um, to, or mentor and set up that timeline within 30 days to start getting your plan done. It's so easy to procrastinate. So why a written plan? So as you know, the spoken word is too fluid. We have a tendency to ramble. When we speak, we almost never say it exactly the same way twice. Frequently, we forget to share some of the most important details or we spend too much time on unimportant things. When we write, we choose our words more carefully 
clearly defining what makes your company unique improves your chances of success. And that's according to the U.S. Small Business Administration. So you're going to want to keep your business plan simple and easy to read for your audience. Now, let me just say, simple does not mean that you leave out details. It means that you add all the details needed without a lot of fillers. So let's talk about who's the target audience for your business plan or what I call business model. First and foremost, it's you. Your ideas and dreams look different when your thoughts are on paper. It organizes your goals, priorities, and intentions. It also uncovers voids in thought, and by using the business plan template, it addresses subjects you may have looked over, showing those gaps. So let's talk about um, business plan templates and tools. Um, as you can see on this slide, we have um, various tools and templates shown. We have the business canvas model template, which is a one page at a glance um, template. We have live plan software. It's a cloud-based software, um, kind of like Google Doc where two individuals can see it. Uh, you have your one page business plan and the traditional business plan template. All work great. The key here is use what will be easy for you to understand so that you can fill it out correctly. These templates are made to keep your ideas in order of what is needed to create your business model. And I want you to keep in mind that business models evolve. So for those of you that are in business, what you could have wrote or would have wrote about your business maybe a year ago has probably changed. There's probably would be some changes that you would make. Many templates are available online um, and some are for pay while um, there are a lot of others that are free. The SCORE website has a robust page that offers a free business plan template. Um, and here at Maricopa SBDC, we have access to all these tools to use with our clients. So maybe you have an idea, not quite sure you wanna put a lot of time into a plan. Maybe the, the, the Canvas model template would be best for you and we would use that with you. But um, one of our favorite business planning templates is Life Plan. So today we're going to be using some of our examples using that life plan um, model. Whatever you use, keep in mind that registering with a business counselor or mentor can answer questions that you're unsure of and also provide feedback on your progress. So there are two areas in a business plan called vision and mission statements. Now, Life plan doesn't ask for these, but I want to address these in this framework. Uh, these are often a challenge to clients, so I want to help you understand how to write them. Explaining your vision. Here are a few questions that the vision statement will answer. So take a look at those questions. What, what type of business is this and what market does it serve, who your target customers are, etc.? So, and what are you trying to build over the next one, three to five years? So I have a really cool um, formula. It's a simple formula to help you uh, write that vision statement. So you take the type of business plus your geographic scope and projected annual sales plus core products and services plus your customer profile. And I have an example on the screen here. So I uh, used an example of a construction company that would mitigate some of our housing crisis um, due to our big companies that are moving into Maricopa County. So let me read this. Uh, WH Development designs and builds affordable living communities throughout urban regions close to big industries in Arizona. 
we are providing a solution for the ever-growing workforce housing shortage. Over the next three years, we're looking to grow into a $15 million workforce housing designer. Now, keeping it brief but clear is going to be important. I want you to reflect on your vision statement for a few days, and then I want you to consider sharing this with a few people and asking for their feedback. Now, this example is not perfect, but if we all put our heads together and I asked you for feedback, I know we could condense it and make it almost perfect. So don't be afraid to ask for feedback. But I do highly recommend this formula. It's very helpful. Now, let's look at explaining that mission. So every business exists for a reason. Um, this is sometimes difficult to write as well because it might seem like they're the same thing, vision and mission statement. This is mission statements always answer the question, who will we serve and what will we do for them? And here's some questions on this slide that um, would help you figure out how are we gonna answer that? So we have another simple formula for writing a mission statement. That would be ideal client description plus goal or benefit of your products and services. So let's look at our example here really quick. Keep in mind that if I discussed it with you all um, and asked for your feedback, uh, we would probably come up with a really great final vision statement or mission statement. Um, so providing our expanding workforce a quality built affordable home in developed communities close to big industries. Now, could we reword some of that? Absolutely. But still making our point on what our mission is, right? So I hope that was helpful. Let's go ahead and move on. So the five parts of the business plan model that we're going to look at is executive summary, opportunity, execution, company, and financial plan. We're also going to be sharing trends for 2023. Um, under execution, it shows marketing plan. Uh, Armando has created some really great slides that's going to show you what you need to really consider for 2023 when it's uh, regarding marketing. There's a lot of changes that are being made that we need to be aware of. So this, um, this slide right here, uh, it is um, what life plan would look like if you were um, creating your business plan in that. And on the left-hand corner, you see, uh, or column, you'll see pitch, plan, forecast, benchmarks, etc. Where we like to have our clients focus is under plan and forecast to get started. So then we move to the next column, and it shows executive summary, opportunity, execution, company, and financial plan. Now, the executive summary, this summary should always be done last. It's a compilation of the body of your business plan. So it'll seem like you're being repetitive, but it's really just summarizing your full responses from the plan. So let's say you're in business and you're looking for some funding and they've said, hey, you need a business plan. This executive summary uh, is usually one of those top sheets right under your cover. And this is what they would read first, but it does need to be in summary form. Take a look at the problem worth solving under opportunity. What you would write here, and if you look at this, you would see the little start writing now button. Uh, this slide plan is just really created a, a, a platform that's really simple to use. Uh, it's user friendly. Right there, you would describe the key problem or unmet need that you will address for your customers. So if you have a common business, such as a restaurant or nail salon, explain why, you, why your customers need your particular restaurant or salon. Is it pricing? Maybe you have lower prices or convenient hours. 
a better location, or maybe you're in a location that um, is, is newer. It's in the expanding part of Maricopa County where there's not a lot of wraparound services and locations to meet um, the growing communities. Um, so here's, here's the thing. With problem worth solving, you wanna identify um, that problem that you're trying to meet. So um, maybe your company is doing something different, okay? It's something new and it's innovative, right? So explain how your company will address. So under our solution, you're gonna explain how your company is going to address the problem that you've identified above. So instead of your mission and vision, this is where you're gonna say, hey, I've identified a gap. I've identified a problem we're solving and our solution is going to be whatever you found was the problem, right? So how you're mitigating that. So let me give you a tip for 2023. Uh, in Maricopa County, we have some big manufacturers that are building and um, they're in areas that are now pushing into areas that are undeveloped. So all those areas are gonna need wraparound businesses, housing and services as those areas grow. Describe your target market. So the subtopic, you're gonna see um, marketing size and segments. Who's your ideal customer? And Armando's gonna talk a little bit more about that. Who are the people or companies who have a problem that you're trying to solve? How do they break down into segments? That is recognizable customer types with similar demographics, needs, and expectations. And how many potential customers does your research suggest there are in each segment? The sizing component here is critical. So think about how many of the prospects in each segment are likely to buy from you and what they will typically spend on this sort of solution over the course of a year. If the market opportunity is small, it will limit how big and successful your business can become and may even be too small to support a successful business at all. Very important to, to do the research so that you can recognize that. Competition. What are your current alternatives? Describe what the competitive landscape for your products and services are. Do you have direct competitors? Most likely you do. And if you don't, then you probably have a new and innovative company and idea. Talk about them, even look at their Google ratings. Go ahead and list a few, show how far they are from the location that you're looking at and maybe put down their Google ratings. At the SBDC, we have wonderful tools, and this tool uh, is called Vertical IQ. And as you can see here, um, it provides my local economy. It has a drop down box, and it's showing Maricopa AZ. It's showing our job growth and what it is uh, in the nation, uh, home price forecast. So what it is nationally and what it is here in Maricopa County. Home prices, the national average um, or the average price in that it's 9% up over the last 12 months. And then unemployment, it's down and it shows what the national is and what last year was. Um, so we are able to share um, reports from this vertical IQ. Uh, we have industry reports, local reports, like what you're seeing here. Um, and this really helps with identifying, um, you know, research and trends within your industry and areas. Another great research tool it, for information is census.gov. Uh, highly recommend you do your research before you get started because it's gonna tell a story. 
Now I'm going to turn this presentation over to Armando to talk about uh, the marketing plan and this year's trends. Thanks, Lisa. I'm really, like uh, Lisa mentioned, I'm a SBDC counselor here and I've uh, worked in digital marketing for a few years and I'm very excited to be sharing some, some steps as to how to, to uh, come up with a business plan, uh, sorry, a marketing plan for your business and uh, some trends to keep in mind for this upcoming year and the future. Now, Faith, before we dive into it, could you share the next poll question? All right, the, the poll question is, does your company do its own marketing? The answers are yes, no, or we have an outside resource to assist. Okay, waiting for the results to come in. Okay, does your company do your own its own marketing? Uh 84% yes, 12% no, and 4% use an outside resource. So uh given those responses, I hope that this uh presentation and this uh, section can help you come up with a good marketing strategy, right? So what is the importance of a good marketing plan? But first let's talk about what a marketing plan is. And a marketing plan is a strategic roadmap that businesses use to organize, execute, and track their marketing strategies over a given period of time, right? And why is this important? First, a marketing plan helps uh, set your marketing strategy and goals. And it's important that these goals align to your overall business goals. Secondly, it's very important that your business uh, focuses on the most effective marketing tactics uh, because sometimes there's some marketing tactics and um, avenues that really don't work for your business, and with a good mark and without a marketing plan, uh, businesses sometimes may waste resources on ineffective marketing tactics that bring them little to no um, impact. Um, and lastly, and this is very important, it helps identify target customers. Right? Sometimes businesses like to say that everyone is our customer, everyone's our audience, but having a targeted a uh, customer will bring the most impact to your business. And all this in turn, um, hopefully brings a, you know, a good return on investment. Next slide, Lisa. Um, and I have broken it down into six simple steps that we are gonna dive into, take a deep dive into on what it is, what you need to come up with a marketing plan and strategy. Step one, you're gonna conduct market analysis. Step two is going to be setting your marketing goals. Step three, identifying your unique selling proposition or your USP. Step four, identifying your target audience. Step five, choosing the right marketing mix. And lastly, it's going to be implementation and tracking. Okay, step one, you need to conduct a market analysis. And in order to do this, you need to understand your target market. And by doing this, you will clearly define the market that your business is operating in. And as Lisa mentioned, you need to do some research to understand the size, the growth rate, and some of the key segments that you're trying to, to target. And you need to understand the needs of your target customers. And this will include your demographics, psychographics, and buying behaviors. You need to understand the current marketing conditions which means that you need to understand the economic, te technological, and regulatory factors uh, of the market that you're going into. And this can be done uh, through some various sources, including market research surveys, industry reports, and government statistics, which here at SBDC, we can help you obtain and we can help you implement into your marketing plan. One other important part of this step is that you need to understand your competitors strength and weaknesses right as lisa mentioned you know you can do some searching through google see their reviews what customers are saying and you need to analyze and and pinpoint what their strengths are and this can be uh in regards to their products their pricing their marketing strategies their customers 
And then once you have pinpointed that, you can see what you can apply to your own marketing plan, what you can do better, what doesn't work, and, and kind of tailor it to your own marketing needs. Step two is setting clear and measurable marketing goals. Setting goals is important uh, because you want to know when you're achieving your marketing efforts. But first, you have to be very specific as to what you want to achieve. Lisa, can you hit one more time? You know, each business is different in what it will need from its marketing efforts. If your business is one that that's primary revenue comes through ad, you know, ads and ad revenue, then you might want to increase traffic to your website, which is different than, you know, other content marketing goals. Maybe you're a business that has a physical product that wants to increase their brand awareness and brand loyalty. That's different than someone who is trying to educate, right? Uh, and then, you know, maybe you're in, you want to generate leads for your business. That's very different. So that's why it's important to be specific as to what you want to achieve. And once you have set these priorities, uh, then you can focus on those most important objectives first. And again, it's very important that you align these goals with your overall business objective. You know, these are not separate goals, but other uh, goals that work in parallel to achieve your business goal. Uh, and, you know, everyone knows about SMART goals. Uh, so use SMART goals, uh, which are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound just to ensure that you can track your progress, right? And again, always review regularly, review your goals, review your marketing tactics to make sure that you're on track and that if you need to adjust, don't be afraid to adjust them as time passes and you learn more about what's working and what's not. Okay, no, step number three is developing your unique selling proposition. A unique selling proposition is a statement that clearly defines how your product or service is set apart from the competition. And for this step, you need to, to craft a statement that clearly communicates your USP and make sure that it's easy to understand and it's easy to remember. Here, I provide one example of that is well known. Uh, it's very common and it's Domino's. Domino's USP is that they guarantee fresh hot pizza delivered in under 30 minutes or less, right? Once you have identified a, a short, concise, easy to remember statement, you need to make sure that this USP, which is unique selling proposition, is, is weaved into all your marketing efforts and all your messaging and branding. And you need to test this uh, USP with your target audience just to make sure that it resonates with them. And if it's not completely resonating, then you can also make some tweaks here and there from the feedback that you're getting. Step number four, this is an important one. You need to identify your target audience. As we mentioned before, you know, not everyone's going to be your customer, but when you identify your target audience, you need to uh, create a customer persona. And here at SBDC, we have a workshop, I mean, sorry, a worksheet that can help you uh, identify this uh, persona. You need to understand uh, their, wh why are they interested in this product or services? What are their demographics? What is their occupations? What is their psychographics? What are their behaviors, right? Uh, and when you create this um, fictional representation of your ideal customer, then you can understand the, the characteristics, the needs and the behaviors of your, of your target audiences, right? Then once, uh, as you learn more, then you can start tailoring as to what comes new uh, from market changes or new insights. And that way you will have a better understanding of your target audiences and your ideal customer. And step number five is choosing the right marketing mix. You know, there are still a lot of avenues to marketing. You know, there's social media, there's email marketing, there's a website, there is a podcast, there's a, a video. But determining the right marketing mix uh, comes after you know your ideal customer, right? Where is your ideal customer spending their time? You know, do they check their email multiple times a day? 
do they spend their time on LinkedIn or do they spend it more on Instagram? Do they like watching videos? Do they like watching TV? Once you have that understanding of your ideal customer, then you can pick the right marketing mix. For example, social media, email, content, um, and you know, developing the right mix will effect effectively reach and engage your target audience and align with your uh, UVP and everything that you provide. You need to allocate, uh, another important part of this is allocating budget and resources accordingly. Uh, one suggestion would be to assess your resources, including your budget, personnel, time, to determine what marketing tactics will be feasible for your business. And you need to, at once you have developed that uh, budget and allocated all your resources, you need to test if that marketing mix is working for you and see if the results are, are giving you the impact that you would like. And finally, it's all about tracking and implementing, right? Once you uh, have the right marketing mix, you need to implement and go ahead and launch your plan. You need to assign specific responsibilities to uh, you know, diff either different members of your team, or maybe you are gonna be hiring a freelancer or hiring an agency. That goes part into your uh, budget allocation and, and, and your marketing plan, right? Then you need to communicate your marketing plan to all the parties involved, including your employees, your partners, vendors. And once you have done that, you are ready to launch your plan. Tracking is also gonna be important. Uh, you, know, you need to set up a system to track your, your progress. And this can be done through uh, various um, methods. For example, you can use Excel to track your uh, open rates, your social media impressions and your uh, interactions. Or you can use a product ma uh, project management tool like either Asana or uh, Salesforce and such, right? And again, it's always important to know that you can always make changes, right? As you learn more and maybe you reach goals uh, quickly or you're not reaching other goals, adjustments are always welcome and needed. Now, I wanna dive into some of the marketing trends for 2023. Uh, now that you know how to come up, the six steps to coming up with a marketing plan, I wanna dive into some of the trends to keep in mind as you're coming up with this plan. And I decided to add this meme because I found it funny because you know staying up uh, with marketing trends is really important. And marketing trends are always evolving. And it is crucial to stay current because businesses who don't uh, won't remain competitive. Understanding and adapting to new trends can help a business stay ahead of the curve and reach new audiences and potential new customers. Ignoring new trends can resu result in businesses falling behind competitors and losing market share. So it's important to stay up to date with trends. And I'm gonna talk about five trends to keep in mind as you're coming up with your marketing plan. The first one that I wanna talk about is video marketing. Video marketing is an increasing uh, and very powerful tool to reach uh, and engage new target audiences. Uh, the first one is because of increased engagement. Uh, video is a highly engaging content that gets more attention than just images or text. And it's very, very easy to share on social medias, which leads to an increased brand awareness. Another uh, Another aspect of video that makes it important, especially now in 2023, is because it's getting better SEO, and that means search engine optimization. I don't know if you've gone to you, I mean uh, Google recently, but now uh, search results are providing video as part of their um, part of their answers to any question that is asked. And you know, YouTube is also the second largest uh, search engine after Google. So yeah. SEO is going to be, uh, video is going to be huge for SEO. Video also provides uh, increased conversion in sales. Just because video can showcase products or services in a different way than text and images can, uh, you know, video can provide a build, build trust with potential customers uh, quicker than other mediums. Uh, you know, video has gotten very cost effective. Uh, you know, all you need is an iPhone um, and social media platforms 
are getting uh, very good with uh, their capabilities to edit um, video. So, you know, and add music and add filters and all this good stuff. So video is very cost effective. And finally, you know, uh, video provides um, provides a way to build a personal connection that other mediums don't have just because you're watching them and it's very interactive. One uh, company that I wanted to provide um, kind of insight into how they're using video to market their business is this slime shop that um, uses Instagram Reels, TikTok, and YouTube Shorts. Uh, this business, you know, just doesn't have a video of their product, but, you know, they create video content as to everything that happens around the, the, the products, meaning that they make videos with their employees, they make videos about the process of making their product, and they also, uh, you know, take in some questions from, from customers and, and, and make video content around it. So that's just one example of a way that this small business is using video marketing. Uh, trend number two is user-generated content. Now, user-generated content is important to business because it allows them to leverage the power of their customers to create authentic and engaging content to help increase brand awareness, trust, and loyalty. So if, we, if a customer you know, takes a picture, creates a video of your product, and then the brand or the business shares it, that's user-generated content. And the user-generated content is important because it's it increases trust and credibility, right? So, uh, you know, this type of content is seen as more authentic and trustworthy than just traditional marketing content as it comes directly from real customers. Uh, then you, uh, UGC it also provides um, increased social proof. And this means that, you know, real customers are sat showing that they are satisfied uh, with the product or services, which, you know, that's, what they, what it means by social proof. Again, you know, it's cost effective since, you know, a business is not uh, investing in the creation of the content. You are just basically repurposing your customer's content. Again, very cost effective. And, it, you know, just because you're interacting and customers are interacting with your brand back, it's, you know, increased engagement. And that's always good for algorithms and, and uh, discoverability. And finally, you know, you get a better understanding of your customers because they're providing you feedback in real time. Uh, one example of that of user, sorry, Lisa, can you go back? One example of user generated com, uh, content is this company called Warby Parker. So Warby Parker is a business that uh, sells prescription glasses for a lot cheaper than if you were to go to uh, just to a regular uh, eye doctor's office. And what they do is that once you get your glasses, you share it to so social media and then kind of the brand, uh, Warby Parker, the company interacts with you and shares it on their own channels. And then you get some feedback as to how the glasses look. So that's just one example of user generated content, but there are multiple brands doing it. Mm -hmm. Another one, another important one, uh, number three is cohesive customer experiences. This is very important because, um, you know, as a customer interacts with a business, uh, it's important that the customer has a seamless and consistent consistent experience throughout throughout all touch points and interactions that he or she has with the brand, right? And that increases uh, customer satisfaction, loyalty, and ultimately revenue. So what we mean from this, if you look at this, bullseye that we have here uh, on the slide. If a customer were to f interact with your business through a free listing, then move on to your social media channel, then maybe sign up for your newsletter and get an email from you. And from that, you know, they visit your website to buy your product or read more about you. You want to make sure that the experience is consistent throughout. And this just means that that you know, your logos are all the same, that your colors, your branding, your messaging is consistent. So it feels that it's just one experience and that they are not dealing with multiple brands or different uh, companies, right? And why is cohesive customer experience is important? First, it increases customer satisfaction and brand recognition, leading to increased customer retention and increased revenue.
And uh, the last two trends that I want to talk about are, you know, important for 2023 and beyond. Uh, the first one is, uh, you know, we customers need improved user experiences across all devices. And this basically means that if a customer visits your website on, on a laptop uh, and then visits your website on your phone, you just have to make sure that that experience is, is good. And it's kind of the same. Uh, and, you know, over 50% of people use their phones to browse the internet. So having, having a mobile friendly website is gonna be very important now and for the future. Uh, some examples of some user de design trends include uh, minimalism, minimalism, and blending. This just means that uh, don't do don't uh, don't overwhelm your your uh, customers with a lot of information, a lot of images, a lot of uh, content on, on your landing pages. Uh, you know, don't use intrusive advertisement or pop ups. Uh, you know, that's just to create a better experience for them and just to get um, get them to either buy your product or whatever call to action you have for them, get it done as soon as possible and seamlessly as possible. Another trend for user experience would be, uh, they call it scrolly telling or telling a story as the user scrolls, right? So think about if you are at an, an about page and as you scroll, you kind of learn the story about your business and and it's kind of uh, interactive in that way. And then at the end, you, know, you, have, you have your call to action. And finally, video content, is huge for a user experience. And we already touched on that. Finally, we have a uh, marketing trends for 2023 and beyond, and it's AI for better trend spotting. You know, AI might seem like it's something way down in the future, but this year and um, in the coming years, it's going to start uh, taking, uh, providing some services to businesses uh, that, uh, you know, would be expensive if you were to hire someone. Some ways that AI is being used now is one, predictive analytics. Um, AI can be used to analyze data from customer interactions and predict future behaviors and press uh, preferences. And this can be used for like marketing campaigns, uh, also ads, and that's just some examples, right? Then we have chat box and virtual assistants. I know uh, ACA has a chat box, Sally. Uh, a lot of companies, you know, are using uh, that software on their website to kind of help customers guide them through uh, queue of uh, uh, frequently asked questions or send them to a specific site on their websites. And that's, you know, that's something that's gonna become more popular. Uh, content creation, there are uh, AI companies that can provide uh, some support if you're not good at writing copy or writing blogs. Now there's some tools like uh, Jasper AI that can help you with that. Again, uh, AI is going to be huge on email marketing and optimizing websites. And those are some of the trends that I uh, that we've been researching and that you should keep in mind as you're coming up with your marketing plan and think about how you can leverage these trends uh, and integrate them to your marketing plan. And now I'm going to hand it over to Lisa so she can continue going through the rest of the business plan. Wow. <laughs> that is, Armando, you did a great job and gave us a ton of information to think about. And, you know, I have personally owned, um, you know, five Arizona-based businesses over the last 25 years. And looking at these marketing trends, it was so important that Armando share so much because I would find that I'm behind the eight ball. So if you need help, uh, you know, joining the ACA um, digital boot camp is going to be huge. And also, um, you know, reaching out to your SBDC. Let us let us look at what you have and let's see if we can help you um, and with the Arrow program as well. Hi, Robert. Hey. 
Okay, so we let's go ahead and wrap this up really quick. Um, so as you're looking at your business plan, um, you know, you have your area for your marketing and your sales plan. Sales plan is going to be your menu of services, everything that you're offering, right? And you're going to want to explain how you're going to sell those services and operations, locations, and facilities. I'm going to go a little quick, but I will say that um, what we're starting to see right now is that... Um, uh, right now, there are locations, uh, different cities in Maricopa County that don't have a lot of commercial space right now. Prices are still kind of high. And you also want to be mindful that you may need to start working from home or, or your shop first. Um, one of the um, other things to consider is companies are saying farewell to expansive sprawling headquarters, right? So you may not need something big uh, to get started, like I said, because employees are looking for customized hybrid remote work arrangements. Um, so let's say you would need an office, maybe you don't need a big office, right? Um, so just wanted to share, um, you know, there's some big tent tech companies like Meta, Lyft, and Salesforce, and they're known for their big office spaces. Well, they're already be beginning to downsize. Amazon recently hit a pause on its construction plans in Nashville to reconsider how successfully, how to successfully redesign a space suited for their hybrid workers. So just keep in mind um, that uh, space is is kind of an issue. <laughs> and then um, I want you to know that e-commerce growth, that has flatlined leveling off at 21% of core retail sales, down from 23% from uh, 2020. So um, market research firm Forrester predicts online only brands will start to look at making physical connections with customers. So in this new Omnia channel era, uh, we'll no longer um, talk about competition between online and in person, but rather the blending of the two. And so as you can see here, um, we have a, you know, a robust tool to share with you. You're going to want to consider everything you need to buy to get your business started. That means you're going to go online and you are going to uh, start shopping and seeing how much all that costs, right? And so we're getting close to the 10 o'clock um, mark. Um, this plan, this life plan tool is so robust. I mean, it also does the financial projections. I don't believe I have time to go into that, but we uh, can help you at the SBDC start to look at what are your one-time startup costs, monthly expenses, how to put those into life plan to make it um, make sense. Employee cost, I want you to know um, our... Um, uh, state of Arizona, the minimum wage, it did increase to $13.85 effective January um, 1st of this year. And so we want to be mindful of that. Direct cost, are you manufacturing a product? Revenue, I always look at revenue last. That's the last figures I think about because I need to know how much is it going to take just to cover all my overhead expenses, right? So here at the SBDC, we can figure out what your projected profit and loss would be. And <laughs> sorry for the quick talking, I will turn it over to Q&A, um, Robert. Yeah, so we got the, a lot of questions that were asked, we answered them throughout, Armando did, or Faith did, I did. So, um, so I see a question in the chat, can anyone use Live Plan? Uh, yes, you can. Go to Live Plan and purchase an agreement, uh, a license from them, or you can go to the SBDC, and most of them have some free license or no cost licenses that you can use while you're working with the SBDC. Um, Live Plan is awesome. And even if you're an existing business, if you're looking to grow this year and you might need a loan, the Live Plan format and business plan can be used as part of your loan package. And that's really important because a lender, if you don't have a nice business plan to go with your request for funds, they're gonna say no. And it's not because they don't like you, it's because you don't have a plan. They have to see your plan, they have to see that you can pay it back 
And so Live Plan can help you do all that. Um, and as we wrap up a couple other things, um, if you like what Armando said about marketing and you're going, that's a lot. We cover a lot of that in the basic piece in our digital academy because most of that was digital. We also have a lot of that information in more detail in our content library from videos to podcasts and so forth. Uh, we've, we've covered it in the past. We'll cover it in the future again as well because things change. But there's a lot of great information in the content library on those. But uh, I would encourage you, if you like the marketing piece and you need to know more, you may definitely look at our Small Business Digital Academy uh, cohort that we have upcoming, a six-week program. Again, that's no cost. And then just a reminder, the SBDC is also no cost to utilize their services. Whether you're in Arizona, if you're outside of Arizona, the SBDC is still no cost in the state that you reside. So um, with that, we are out of time. We want to thank Armando and Lisa for the great presentations. Um, there is a note that asks us to schedule. Um, you can either call or sign up online for the SBDC, and they'll get you directed to the center that's closest to you. Um, and you can work with them either in person or remotely as well uh, in your area. So with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Again, Armando and Lisa, thank you for your time. I wanna thank all of our attendees for being here with us. We look forward to seeing you next week on our next presentation. And again, if you know any Spanish speakers, please have them come to this evening's session as well. Uh, we're kicking that off and the better attendance we get, the more we can do uh, for that for in Spanish. We're, we're kicking off more Spanish sessions this year because there's a need for it in Arizona. So with that, I want to wrap up. Again, thank you. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.